All right guys, so uh, as I was uh, putting together this video on my computer, I kind of realized uh, I completely forgot to record an intro. So uh, first off, I want to uh, state very clearly and openly that uh, I uh, contacted Jennifer and have permission to monetize this video. So for the first 60 days that this video is live, um, whatever's made off of it from YouTube uh, ad revenue is gonna go straight to the Woods family. So um, after 60 days, um, usually my video content only really performs well for like the first three to four weeks. So just to be safe, I'm gonna bump it out to uh, 60 days and uh, uh, give them whatever's made off of this. So <clears throat> now to introduce myself, for those of you that don't know, my name is Justin King, and I am currently serving as the Public Affairs Officer for Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery. Um, so usually, uh, any of the uh, content that you see come out on the org's uh, Facebook page or YouTube uh, recovery videos and stuff, I edit that or I write the stories and I publish them. So uh, I just wanted to give you that quick little background on me since I forgot to do that in the field. So let's jump into this video and uh, break down this incident in Arizona. All right, guys. So a week ago, uh, you may have seen floating around the internet a, uh, a story about a fatal uh, incident in Arizona regarding an off-road recovery that went wrong. And uh, I got uh, contacted on the org's uh, Facebook page by the widow, uh, Jennifer Woods, and uh, she had asked to share the story. And uh, as time went by here, uh, I made a post on our public page for the off-road recovery team, and it went viral uh, very, very quickly. Um, I think as of this morning, we're sitting at 930,000 views, almost 4,000 shares. So it's going pretty far and wide. So I reached out to Jennifer and asked if I could convert this into a video that could also be shared. Uh, and she said, absolutely, yes. And uh, it's dedicated to her husband, Ryan. So what we're going to go over is what happened in Arizona. And basically, uh, to give a little uh, early synopsis here into the video, they were out enjoying their, uh, their Super Duty. And I'll, I'll overlay some pictures and stuff in here as well as we go. Um, but they were out enjoying their Super Duty. Uh, it was in Arizona. And, uh, you know, it's monsoon season. It's actually pretty humid this morning here in Colorado, too. And they ended up trying to go through some mud and got stuck. I don't know how long they were stuck. I, I didn't dig into, you know, that granular of detail, but they were stuck. Um, someone came along, a friend, buddy, passerby, and tried to pull them out. And they were using a drop hitch and they were using chain uh, and I believe a static strap. And ultimately the forces at play, which we're gonna break down, exceeded the ratings of that towing hitch. And when it failed, it failed catastrophically, just like most, uh, most scenarios involving tow balls and tow hitches do. And it went slingshotting through the windshield at who knows how fast, a couple hundred mile an hour, multiple thousand feet per second, hit the steering wheel of the Super Duty, deflected up into Mr. Woods, and it was fatal. Uh, very quickly fatal. So what we're gonna go over is, uh, I made some, some notes here, and uh, we're gonna go over some of the proper gear. It's, it's sitting on my tailgate here. Uh, we're gonna go over, sorry my truck is sitting at an angle, I'm just in the field west of my house here. But uh, we're going to go over uh, the ratings on this gear and how it should have been done properly. Um, I'm not trying to armchair quarterback this. Uh, this is not meant to be a uh, everything was done wrong video. Um, there was a loss of life on this one. And this is more about education so it never happens again. There's absolutely no reason for this to ever happen again. And if anything comes out of this, if anything comes out of our public page Facebook post, um, just one person that decides that they're not going to pull on their towing hitches or tow balls anymore, uh, that's potentially another life saved. So um, let's get into it. So the, uh, for, for the sake of, of guessing the math here, um, the Super Duty we're going to say weighs 9,000 pounds. Uh, I don't know exactly what truck it was that was trying to recover the Super Duty, but I'm going to go with an 8,950 pound truck. Example, this one. Uh, loaded down, this thing's 8,000-ish pounds, so I round it up for the sake of easier math. And uh, putting it into the calculator to stay within some of the limits of, of the gear, 
um, and I'll dig into that a little bit as well. But so 9,000 pound Super Duty, 8,950 pound truck, and the stuck force on that Super Duty, uh, running the math through the Safe Extract application, comes out to uh, 18,750 pounds. And I'll also put a screenshot in here showing that. So your two inch towing ball, uh, this guy right here, uh, it only has a rating of around 3,000 to 3,500 pounds. It's actually stamped on the ball what it'll do. This one says 5,000 pounds. Um, so most of them are between 3,500 and 12,000. I've never seen a 12,000 pound two inch ball. They're always between 3,500 and six. So we've got a 5,000 pound rated ball here and we have an open tube, okay? This is quarter inch wall, who knows what steel i've had this forever i probably had this since i was 18. Um, so 3500 to we'll call it 12,000 pounds because that's what the specs say online and we're pulling with a stuck force of 18,750. this is extremely dangerous this really small shank on this ball right here is not designed for shock loads coming across it it is designed to pull your trailer flat down the road, okay? Very low resistance. If you've ever got out and pushed your car because you've ran out of gas or had some kind of mechanical problem, like this truck weighs 8,000 pounds, if I put it in neutral, I can push it. I can't push 8,000 pounds, but the rolling resistance of this truck is probably only a few hundred. So that's what this ball is designed for. You know, it's not designed for shock loads across it. Now, step up to, oh, this one's a lot heavier. Step up to this uh, two and five sixteenths ball, and this one is stamped 10,000, okay? So most of the two and five sixteenths balls are good from 6,000 all the way up to 30,000 pounds. This one has a bigger shank on it. It's almost seven eighths to one inch. Actually, I think it is one inch. But still, it is not designed for shock loads coming across it. Now this is a solid bar, okay? So it's a little bit stronger, but this is your weak point, okay? The actual ball. So you should never pull on that. Now I have one more hitch. This much more closely mimics the one that failed, okay? This is my drop hitch for this truck, specifically for this truck because of how tall it is. That hitch in the pictures failed right here at the top of the gusset, okay? So this is also a hollow tube receiver. Yeah, you can see that. There's light coming through, okay? Hollow tube receiver. And this ball is also stamped 14,000 pounds, okay? I don't, you, there's probably no way you're gonna be able to see that, but it's stamped 14,000 pounds. We are still over the weight ratings of all of this equipment, not to mention the shock ratings of this equipment. So, one more hitch that I have here that I don't have. I, I converted my little military camping trailer over to a regular, um, like a lock and roll. There's a pintle hitch, okay? These have a rating. Oh, let me get my cheat sheet so I don't say it wrong. Anywhere from 10,000 to 60,000 pounds. Now this one says 10 tons, okay? So that's 20,000 pounds. I don't know how to do the math in my head very quickly to uh, kilograms, but this is also bolted onto this plate. It's a really thick plate, but your failure point becomes the bolts. This is also solid steel. So the likelihood of this failing, it's gonna fail at the shear point here on these bolts, okay? So you're getting closer to what you should be using, but you don't have, you still don't have the proper gear. Okay, so let's dig into this a little bit more here on my notes. Um, so when that drop hitch failed in Arizona, it failed at the top of the gusset. It failed right here, okay? So it failed at the top of the gusset. All of that steel hanging down there, including the trailer ball, like just me picking this up, it's heavy. Imagine that coming at you at over a thousand feet per second. 
and imagine that smashing through your windshield, you would, it happens in the blink of an eye. Okay, so <laughs> do not pull with this equipment. Sorry, I had to shut the camera off for a minute there. We had somebody walking by. So what is the proper equipment to use? Proper equipment to use is something like this. This is not a sponsored of any kind video. Now let me get my face out of the way so it focuses, okay? Factor 55 is probably the only company that I would recommend because of the way that they test and rate their equipment. This is the Hitchlink 2.5. I have a 2.5 inch uh, diameter receiver on this truck, so I have a 2.5 inch Hitchlink. This is rated at 18,000 pounds. Let me step out of the way so it'll try and focus. 18,000 pounds, all right? So now we're getting up there to where the stuck forces are in that truck. This particular hitch link has a failure rating, minimum braking strength of 69,000 pounds. The two inch version of this has a 9,500 pound rating. So we're a little under the stuck force of that truck, but the two inch version of it has a 51,000 pound braking strength. Now, I would not intentionally use a two inch on a Super Duty, like trying to pull it out with a, a Jeep or something like that, because you are immediately exceeding the working load limit of the two inch version of this hitch link, okay? So using the two and a half inch version at 18,000 pounds, we're within, when I run calculations on the stuck force and add on that 10% fluff factor, extra safety margin, that 750 pounds, not gonna worry about. This is not gonna fail because I'm off by 700 pounds. So what do you use through the hole on this? You need to use the proper size shackle, okay? This is a Skookum shackle. The yellow and the red should give that away if you're familiar with them at all. Uh, I'll step away from the camera so it'll try and focus on it. Skookum, and this is a, uh, all my paint's worn off, but it is a 12 ton shackle. So this has a working load limit of 24,000 pounds. And we are underneath the 24,000 pound rating with that stuck Super Duty. Now, the Skookum shackles have a five to one uh, safety margin built into them. This is overhead crane rated. So you can stand underneath of this if you were you know, hoisting stuff up and having it slung over your head on job sites. And this has a braking strength of 120,000 pounds, okay? So 24,000 pounds times five, 120,000 pounds. This is not gonna come apart. The other thing you can do on the front of your stuck truck is run soft shackles. This, oh, I gotta get my face out of the picture. This has a braking strength of uh, 52,300 pounds, and it's actually stamped in kilograms, 23,586, okay? So these soft shackles, this little piece of rope is stronger than this working load limit, but this is its braking strength, okay? These are rated at their top end braking strength. So this is actually technically stronger. This is the top of the load limit. So I would have run a bridle off the front of that truck and I would have used two straps like this. I have two of these straps. I'll get out of the way again so this will focus, okay? This says right on it, never exceed 30,000 pounds, okay? We're only talking about 18,750. And if you ran two straps to each front of the tow point down to one of these shackles or a soft shackle, off to a boba rope. There's a lot of different versions of these. It's all just kinetic, uh, these are kinetic recovery ropes. Okay, look at the strength rating on that. 7 eighths by 20 bubble rope, 28,600 pounds. I love this thing. Okay, people seem to think online that we don't ever use these. We use these all the time. When we're stuck in snow, these are fantastic. I purposely go out and get this truck stuck just to play uh, uh, with recovery gear and practice my skills with friends. This is what we use, okay? Now, for, I don't know what vehicle was, was pulling on the, it was definitely a truck based on the pictures from the, the receiver. 
but the safest way to recover that truck would have been with gear rated well above the stuck force or turn around the truck put a couple of straps on, or even like grade 120 chain you can use chain it just needs to be rated for what you're using it for 120 grade chain is overhead crane rated mega safety margins high failure strength chain bridle off the front of the truck and go to you know a, a soft shackle if you can do it in a manner that it won't break it or a hard shackle and then that would have required even on this truck with a 12,000 pound winch I would have had to have gone out and back with a two to one and a pulley block and pulled the truck out that way that would have been the safest way so I was trying to keep this kind of short I know it's already over 10 minutes it's probably over 15 minutes but this is the gear that you should be using okay this is not a plug for bubble rope it's not a plug for gator jaw it's not a plug for factor 55 this is just what you should be using okay you should never pull on pintle hitches you should never pull on drop hitches you should never pull on these little flimsy two inch trailer balls okay this stuff's gonna kill you all right if anything comes out of this I've seen comments on our Facebook post already I did not know this I'll never do it again I've seen four or five of those that I can scroll through and find Facebook's kind of weird when posts go viral it's very hard to get through all of the comments because of the way that they load people are seeing it they understand that you're not supposed to do it okay so if anything comes from this if anything comes from Ryan Woods death stop pulling on the toe balls please all right go buy you some of this is so light I can I can pinky it all right it's this is incredibly light this shackle weighs more than this hitch link does from factor 55 all right all right if you have any questions let me make sure I didn't miss anything oh I did miss one thing these hitch pins these hitch pins typically have a shear strength they call it double shear okay it has to be in the receiver all the way through and pinned they have a double shear strength 40,000 to 60,000 pounds depending on the pin okay this is actually stronger I believe than a grade 8 bolt grade 8 bolt shear uh, double shear strength is actually pretty weak grade 8 bolts have clamping force when you tighten them down the shear strength is pretty weak these hitch pins are actually stronger so you're not supposed to put your strap through your receiver and pin it it's definitely safer than using a tow ball but you can bend this pin and now your pin is jammed in there and you can't get it out okay you have to cut it out you need to put it in through like a hitch link this has double holes in it so you can run it vertical or horizontal but guys that's all I really wanted to cover um, if anybody has questions I'll do my absolute best to stay on top of the questions depending on how quickly this spreads uh, some of those questions could be difficult but if you're out and you're stuck and someone comes by with a truck and some chain uh, please decline their help uh, please call people that know what they're doing call tow companies there's tow companies that go off-road um, if you're in Colorado call us um, we are extensively trained we know what we're doing um, we're going to probably overrig it and we're going to do it very slowly so that way we can control the extraction and get everyone out of there safely and not have any bits of metal come kneecap anybody or fly into your head so um, if you got any questions please post them um, please share the video so folks can see it and uh, that's all I got for you guys. Have a good one.